In today's Worthless Whips episode, I'm going to teach you all how to build a custom motorcycle in a day. Now, of course, you get different levels of custom motorcycles. You get ones that are just insane with a lot of fabrication. I've built a couple myself, like this SR400. I'd say this is a middle of the road one. It was pretty difficult. There was quite a lot of uh, cutting and, and shaping of metal and stuff for me to get it the way it is. I got... But you get much more in-depth builds where people build their own frames and that kind of thing. But what I'm going to show you is how to take a bog standard sort of cheap Chinese knockoff motorcycle or a very entry level motorcycle and more or less just bolt things onto it and a little bit of cutting with a grinder here or there and uh, end up making something cool. In fact, if you've seen any of our documentaries like Conquering Northern China, Conquering Southern China um, and of course the ADV China channel, these little uh, custom motorcycles that I built for us took us across the entire country. We must have racked up about 60,000 kilometers on each of these bikes and they just kept going. They were wonderful little bikes that were light and we could get them over rough terrain and do all sorts of things. Fantastic stuff. So I'm going to show you how I built them. Now before I get started, it doesn't matter what motorcycle you have. You'll learn something from this video if you just want to make your bike look a little cooler or get some ideas on what to do. But I've found that uh, small little standard motorcycles along the lines of the Honda CGs and the Suzuki GNs and what have you seem to work very well. So you're basically looking for a bike that's not too fancy. You don't want something with a lot of fairing on it like a sports bike. Although you can make those into custom bikes easily. You can make them into what are called street fighters by removing all the the fairings and, and so on and so forth. But we're focusing on standard motorcycles today. So let's talk about the candidate for today's build. We will be using a Suzuki GN125. Now, this is a very simple standard motorcycle. You could buy Suzuki GNs around the world. You could get up to a GN250, I believe. In fact, they even released a GN400 at some point. So we're gonna focus on the GN for today because that's been my most successful build. I called them the Churchill Moriarty's and I built a lot of these bikes. We ended up selling them to a bunch of different expats around the country in China while we were living there. And of course, these are the stars of our ADV China channel. If you go and watch all our videos going back years, you will see us riding these motorcycles. I had a purple one, which I originally built for my wife, but I ended up taking over. And Seamilk has the white one with a sort of white and black one with a brown seat, which we built for him as well. So we're going to keep this very simple here. I don't want to bore you and I'm not going to go through every single detail. So we're going to talk in a bit of generality here and there. And what you want to do when you start out building a bike like this is you want to basically get yourself some big, nice plastic tubs to keep all the bits that you're taking off the bike. I used to have like a, an off box and an on box. So all the new parts that I'm going to put on the bike, I'd kind of get in a little plastic tub and all the stuff I was taking off, I'd chuck in another plastic tub. Now, it's simple. You just need hand tools to do this kind of thing. A bunch of spanners, a socket set, that kind of thing. The grinding is only really something you have to do to the fenders. On some of my builds, I would grind off part of the frame, you know, in order to do some welding and stuff. We're not going to do that for this. You know, the only thing that we need other than uh, sockets and wrenches is, of course, we're going to need a drill. There are a couple of holes we're going to need to drill in the fenders when we modify them. Uh, handlebars, things like that. And that's all I can think of. So if you've got a grinder, a drill, an electric drill, and a good set of sockets and, and wrenches and things, you're going to be golden. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by taking off all the crap. Now, especially these Chinese versions, they're meant to be used as like delivery bikes, taxi bikes, things like that. So there's a lot of junk on them, like a big luggage rack on the rear. Uh, obviously, all the, the very ugly lights, uh, a very ugly big thick seat, which looks comfortable, but trust me, it's not. So we're basically going to start by removing all of those and they just simply bolt off. Just remember where the bolts came from. If you need to mark them, put them in a bag or something, do that, but it'll help you later on. Um, obviously, when you do enough of these, you know exactly what goes where. But once you've managed to remove the luggage rack and this horrible seat, it's time to move on to one of the biggest things that changes the look of this bike, and that is the rear fender. So 
So I found that changing the angle of the fender actually improves the look of the bike a lot. Of course, it does end up with a little bit of a mud stripe up your back if you go through a muddy puddle or something, but remember, custom bikes are all about looks and uh, form over function. You've got to remember that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this fender, and the way we're going to do that is, of course, take it off first. We don't need to buy anything special, and that's the beauty of building these little custom bikes is, you know, they're very cheap to build. So disconnect the lights. It's fairly simple. It's just, just little plugs. Um, then what you're going to do is unbolt the fender and slip it off. Now that's one ugly fender and that rear light is even more hideous. So we're going to get rid of that rear light. Very simple, just unbolted from the fender. We're going to be reusing the fender and luckily those bolt holes and that hole will fit our little aftermarket light later. I mean, that already looks much better. So set that aside, because that's going to be a piece that we'll modify. Let's get on with it. Next, we're just going to take off the side panels. That's super easy. They just clip off. You don't even need to unscrew or unbolt anything. So we'll take those off, set them aside again. We will be reusing these, but we're going to get rid of the badges and fill in the holes and things like that. Set those aside and let's tackle the fuel tank next, which is also very simple to remove. It's just one or two bolts that hold it down. And once you've loosened those and of course removed the fuel lines and you first close the petcock so you don't spill fuel everywhere if you've got fuel in the tank, just unplug everything and uh, it just lifts off. It's super simple. Just make sure you don't lose any of the little rubber grommets and things because we're going to be reusing every single part of this tank. Now some tanks will have a vent tube connected underneath, so don't forget to disconnect that too. And if you've got a fuel injected bike, it'll have a return uh, hose or something like that. So just be mindful of this when you're taking it apart because you don't want to just yank the tank off because you might damage something. So just feel underneath there. And if there's a tube attached, a hose, just disconnect it and lift the thing off. Of course, there are a lot of aftermarket options when it comes to tanks for whichever bike you're busy working on. And there are universal ones which you can just kind of make fit. But I really like the look of these tanks on the GNs. And so we're just going to keep it as is. Of course, we'll remove the badges and fill in the holes and get, get it repainted. But it's just going to stay the same. Next, we're going to move on to the front fender. And this is another part we're going to modify and keep. It's fairly simple. Again, we just have four bolts to remove and then a couple of little brackets that hold the brake line and so on. And we just take those off and it slides right out. Now, some people just remove the front fender and get rid of it because they like the look, but I prefer to have a little something there. First of all, it offers a little bit of structure to hold the forks, the two front forks together. And it also offers a place for those brackets that hold the speedometer cable and the brake cable in place. So I think it's good to keep a little bit of it there. And also I think it looks good, especially you can see here, you know, the final form. I kind of had it down to a T where to cut it. And I kind of like those little mini front fenders that uh, I figured out there. Next thing we're going to do is remove this awful looking chain guard. It's very simple. This actually is held in with a couple of Phillips head screws and uh, we're going to whip this thing off because later on we're going to put on a chain which looks really cool and uh, of course you want to see that and this thing just looks awful. So you can toss that in the pile of things we're not going to be using again and let's move on. Next we're going to remove those hideous stock indicators at the front. We've already gotten rid of the ones at the back but now we're going to get rid of these ones at the front. Now to do this, we have to open up the headlight. The headlight is more or less where all the major connections of your wiring harness end up. So you'll be doing a lot of work within the headlight if you're dealing with the electrics anyway. So what we're going to do is open up the headlight, unplug the indicators. You know, it's easy to find out just by tugging on the wires to see which is which. And then just remove the indicators. We actually are going to use a pretty interesting trick where I'm going to mount the headlight more or less in the indicator bracket holes later and shave down those little clips. That gives it a much better look, it recesses the headlight. So we'll do that a little later, but of course we need to get these indicators off first. Now we're going to make a massive improvement to the bike and that is the wheels. These GNs and a lot of the bikes of this era, they come with these really horrible sort of cast wheels. They look 
pretty awful. And if you want to have a classic bike look good, it has to have wire wheels. That's just the way it goes. On top of that, you want to fit the thickest tire that you can that will fit properly without rubbing anything on your bike because the thicker the tire the cooler the bike looks trust me on this so I went ahead and measured and found the biggest tire that could fit in the back of this thing without rubbing against the chain or without rubbing against the frame the swing arm or anything and I bought these aftermarket wheels on Chinese Taobao which you know you can get them on Alibaba or whatever there will be an aftermarket wire wheel for whichever bike you're working on something that will fit and maybe even an older model of your bike will have a wire wheel option so basically to get this rear wheel off I'm very lucky here because these bikes have a center stand you can see when you put it on the center stand the wheel is already off the ground it makes this job a lot easier but it's not difficult to make a plan with a friend and some kind of a milk crate or something to get the bike off the ground so what you do is you loosen the rear axle sometimes there'll be a cotter pin and a castle nut type thing that you have to take off but it's very straightforward and simple anyone can figure it out once it's loose you basically just knock the axle out now be mindful to remember where all the little spacers go because you're going to have a spacer on each side of the wheel so just put them in order somewhere write it down take a photo whatever you need to do so you don't forget which goes where and now with those spacers out the way we'll be able to remove in this case the drum brake from the rear it can be a bit of a bear to get this out disc brakes are much easier but you know these old school bikes usually have drum brakes on the rear so just basically yank it out there move the wheel forward get the chain off the sprocket of the rear there and then just rip that wheel out of there now on these bikes the sprocket isn't like on a dirt bike connected directly to the wheel it's got something called a cush drive inside which is basically just a piece of rubber that prevents it from being too harsh when you let go of the clutch and pull out what I'd find is that the aftermarket wheels would come with very poor quality cush drives, very often made out of recycled car tires and things. So I'd take the original ones out of the Suzuki wheels and just swap them over into the new aftermarket wheel. And that's what you want to do is you basically just want to move all that hardware across, put your sprocket back onto the new wheel that should fit perfectly in there, and you're ready to put the wheel into the bike. Now putting the wheel back in is pretty much the opposite of taking it out. So you know what to do by now, just follow the steps in reverse. One thing you don't need to worry about at this point is the chain. We're going to put the chain on separately later, so just leave that thing lying there. We're gonna get rid of it because it's a crappy chain anyway. We're gonna be putting a nice beefy O-ring chain on this thing. If you have a little bit of axle grease handy or just grease, I like to put a very thin film on the axle before putting it back in. It's not necessary because you know you have bearings in the wheels and stuff, but it's nice to have a little bit on there. So if you do, chuck a bit on. So we've done the rear wheel and it's time to do the front and this is pretty simple too. All you do is loosen the axle bolts, knock out the axle. Now you've got a disc brake here so it's a different story. It's actually quite a bit easier but you're going to need a friend to help you to hold the bike up or something to prop the bike up because if you remove the front wheel it's just going to basically fall down on the forks and you don't want to do that, you'll damage them. So we're going to want to remove the speedo drive here and this is how the older bikes got their speedometer readings and it just comes free there are spacers as well so put those aside because you don't want to lose those and remember where uh, which side they go on and of course now we're going to have to transfer the disc the actual rotor the disc from this wheel and put it onto the new aftermarket wheel so there are these retaining clips on here which you just have to knock back with a screwdriver and a hammer. This obviously prevents the bolts holding the rotor from coming loose. So knock those out, take the bolts out, take off the rotor slash disc, whatever you want to call it. I like to call it a disc. I don't know why it's called a rotor, but whatever. Take it off, put it on the new wheel, reverse the process, super simple. Don't forget to put your spacer in. And now comes the struggle because I tell you what, sometimes getting that disc back into the caliper, you know, with the, the brake pads can be a bit of a pain. But you know what, mission around a little bit and you'll get it in there.
One thing I did forget to mention, uh, you might need it on yours as well, is we need a, a, a different speedometer driver for this particular aftermarket wheel, but it came with the wheel, so it's not a big deal. Yours should too. So after a little bit of a struggle, um, you know, the wheel's finally on. And you have to admit, it just looks so much better. Now it's up to you. You can actually leave the fender off if you don't want a fender. But of course, like I said earlier, it is better to have one. So we're going to put the fender that I've modified back on now. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage to show you the actual cutting of the fender, but it's no big deal. The front fender did not need any actual modification to anything. All I did was take a sharpie and figure out more or less where I wanted to cut and how much I wanted to cut off and took a grinder and just cut along the lines that I'd drawn. After that, you just file off the edges to make it nice and smooth. And then I actually got an automotive paint place to paint them up for me. Now, it used to be one right next to our shop and it was very cheap. Of course, you can just rattle can it, spray paint it, as long as you put on the right kind of primer, the, you know, because these are chrome. So if you just try to spray paint on them, it'll scrape right off. So it needs to be keyed and primered first. But you know, you can put them back on chrome too. It's entirely up to you. So that's the front one. We're just gonna put it back on, bolt it back the way we took it off. All the cables and everything will just clip into place and uh, we can call that one done. So the next thing we're going to look at are the handlebars. Now the handlebars that come on this bike are kind of like a cruiser style. They, they're pretty high and lean back, but they're very narrow and very uncomfortable to ride, especially for a larger person. So I'm going to be replacing these with a flatter style bar. It's up to you, you know, that you can put any kind of handlebar you want on your custom bike. You can go put an, uh, an off-road bikes, handlebars, you know, straight flat bars. I've messed around with tons. And of course, there's a massive aftermarket, so all you need to do is go online and find the one you like. Sometimes, of course, the diameter is going to be thicker, but there are tons of little adapters you can buy to make it fit to your bike. So that's up to you on what you decide. But after a lot of trial and error, I found a set of bikes that I actually really like. Now, of course, we have to recycle the grips. And what I'm showing you here is a neat little trick to get rid of the grip is you take a big wrench or spanner and place it over the bar and then you just kind of knock it with a hammer and uh, you can knock that grip off without damaging it. So we're going to do that, remove the grip and we're going to put on the new bars. Right, I've slapped on the new bars and of course to put them on is the same as taking them off, you know, a couple of bolts, it's very easy, you'll figure it out. And this is the first time we're going to use a drill. Now what I'm doing is I'm drilling a hole, it's a locator, there's a locator pin on the throttle that prevents, you know, when you pull the throttle back you don't want the whole throttle system there to just spin around, you know. Um, there's a little switch cluster which the throttle connects into and so this is basically just making the locator pin. Now some handlebars come with this already drilled in but of course if you're building a custom bike it's you're probably going to end up drilling your own hole. You'll probably also notice that I've already put the side panel on down there, the, the, the silver grayish silver side panel also just painted by the automotive place next door. Of course I did take the badges off and uh, filled the holes with a little bit of uh, bondo or whatever and uh, it's starting to look pretty nice but now let's get this whole little switch cluster back on there and get it all correct and make sure everything's turning properly and then we can move on to the other side now the other side is pretty much the same situation you want to put the grip on you know, what you do is you take your little cluster, it'll have the locating pin, and, and how I find out where to drill the hole is I will try to put that whole switch cluster on there and move it back and forth so it scrapes the handlebar a little bit because the locator pin will be... And then you can see exactly where you need to drill. So it's very straightforward. Get that all put back together. Make sure all your levers and everything are working properly because remember, this handlebar is a little bit different geometry, so your cables are going to be either a little bit too long or a little bit too short, and you might have to figure out how to reroute them or make sure they're not binding on anything and all that sort of thing. But it's fairly straightforward. If you feel any of your levers aren't working properly, you know, then you can try and figure out how to adjust them, adjust the cables and things. But luckily with this bike, it's very straightforward. There's very little I had to do. And now it's time for us to put our lovely tank back on. Of course, you can see it's been painted 
the badges were removed and a little bit of bondo where the badge holes are where it mounts it's got like a mounting plate it looks a bit ugly so that's all been filled in it's been painted and of course remember you can do this yourself with a rattle can if you want and we just do the reverse of what we did when we took it off make sure you've connected up all the vent tubes you've got all the little rubber bits and pieces and then of course you need to reconnect your fuel line the next thing we're going to look at here, of course, is replacing the exhaust pipe. Now, we could get these pretty cool little aftermarket ones, which we found fit nicely. And, of course, there's a huge aftermarket for any bike that you're building. So, just do a little bit of searching online and you'll find something that will fit. And, you know, the thing that comes stock on these bikes, it's huge, it's heavy, it's ugly, and it sounds terrible. So we're going to be removing that. It's very straightforward. There's not a lot that goes into this. It's a couple of bolts you have to remove. Just on the front of the engine, when you remove it, of course, there's a little gasket, a little copper gasket that you have to um, replace or reuse. It's up to you. And that's really it. You remove the little retaining bracket that holds the, that holds the exhaust pipe into the head of the engine there and remove all the bolts that are holding it in and it just pops right off. So say goodbye to this heavy, old, awful stock exhaust muffler and exhaust pipe. And the new one goes on exactly like you took the old one off. Now for what is probably the most difficult part of the build, and it's not actually that difficult, and that is the rear fender. You know, you have to cut it short in order to move it up and get it at a nice angle. So I just measure it by eye, I put it next to the bike, figure out more or less where I want it. And I want you to pay attention to those two rubber grommets in the front and those two holes, because what we're going to do, we're actually going to drill holes where I've cut it, on the other side obviously where I've cut it, and we're going to put those rubber grommets back in. And that's how it connects to this kind of plastic thing that goes underneath the seat, this plastic mud guard. And uh, that's what kind of holds it in place. So we cut it short, and then I'm going to have to drill two new mounting holes on either side of this thing to kind of position it on the bike in the right place. So this is up to you. You're going to have to play around and get it at the right angle for you. Um, and then that's really it. I have to do a little bit, bit of bending here and there and all that, but uh, really it's something you can just do by, you know, trial and error to get it right. So once it's all ready and on the bike, it's just a matter of putting in your aftermarket rear lights, which will plug in where the originals are plugged in, and then uh, putting on the custom seat, which you can either have made or you can buy from a catalog. We were able to find custom seats that can fit a variety of different bikes and of course fits this one. So it's that simple. Put everything together, put it all back on and voila, you have yourself a custom motorcycle which looks completely different from the original and something you can be proud of because you built it with your own hands. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. A lot of people were asking us to do a bike, so we figured we'd try it out. If you really like this content, then just let us know. But if you uh, prefer the car stuff, then just stick around as usual. Don't forget to go to patreon.com slash worthlesswhips, and you can support us there and get behind-the-scenes content and all that good stuff. So we'll catch you on the next one.